Well, praise the Lord. This is Pastor Scott Kilburn coming to you with part three of prayer. My God, what a series. I hope you're enjoying it much as I'm enjoying it. But let me go ahead and get on into this because I'll tell you what, this is just wonderful stuff. And thank God for all you that's sending emails in telling me, keep them coming, keep them coming. Well, I'm going to keep them coming because, because I, I firmly believe that we as the church, we as the kingdom, and you that's watching this by internet, I tell you, I believe we, that just us, can affect this whole nation. Look at this. I'm coming to you by access of internet, which reaches the whole world. What if all of a sudden I get on here and I tell you, listen, you start praying. Pass the word. Pray now. In the next five minutes, let's all pray. And then you know what happens? All of a sudden, when you start spreading the word and then people start spreading the word all around the world, we all pray at the same time for the same thing. Guess what's going to happen? We just we would see the earth actually quake and watch heaven just manifest here on earth. Listen, prayer works. Prayer works. But catch this. We was talking about how that you just don't base your prayer life upon when it feels good, when it's convenient, you'll pray. But you'll pray no matter what. When it's time for you to pray and you feel a time of prayer, prayer I don't care if, if Joe Bob comes over and says, you know what, let's go out for a steak dinner. You know what you need to tell Joe Bob? Joe Bob... Right there's my living room. Sit on the couch and just relax for a few minutes. I gotta go pray first before I leave here because I gotta pray because it's my life. If I don't pray, I'll die. Now I don't know about that. But yeah, listen. If if I, if you stop praying, your finances will stop. The favor that's on your life will stop. Come on. Success will be no more success. When you stop praying, everything shuts up. It locks. And the only way to unlock that is to pray. Prayer is very needful in a believer's life, business person's life, a school, people going to school. You must pray to succeed. Prayer is, is one way that, you know, that we communicate with God. When you pray, you know, sometimes the flesh says, well, you know, the moment you get up and pray, you're just wasting time. You could be mowing the grass. You could be washing the dishes. You could be going, uh, you, your car needs to be washed. And and it's those moments that you need to be saying, no, I'm not doing anything. Everything else is going to be put on hold until I pray. Until I pray. You should never start your day. You should never go to work without praying first. You may say you get a little bold. Listen, I you got to pray. You put prayer first, it changes everything. You put prayer the first thing you do when you wake up, it'll change your whole day. You won't walk around singing the blues. And I love blues music, and I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you won't go around singing, oh, feel sorry for me. I'm just having it so rough. No, when the moment you start your day off of prayer, as soon as you wake up, you get down, begin to pray or walk, however you pray, you pray. All of a sudden, you'll go through that day charged. And when that, and that enemy comes against you and that flesh wants to cause to bring you down and cause your joy to, to take the joy from you, all of a sudden you say, oh, I know. I prayed today. I realize the adversary that's coming against me. And then you'll stand up and you'll you'll push him out of the way. You'll backhand him. Come on, some of you need to backhand the enemy. Been lying to you and telling you it won't happen. Listen, it's not going to happen. I agree with the enemy to a certain point. If you don't pray, it won't happen. But if you pray, guess what? It's going to happen. And you're not going to have to wait 20, 30 years for it. The moment you begin to pray, believe. You're going to receive. God is going to do some things for you that once you get in this series and start applying this to your life, you're going to see some things change overnight. You're going to see some things that looked impossible become possible. All things are possible to them that believe. And then what the Bible say, what things soever you desire when you pray, 
believe, and my spiritual mother, Darlene Bishop, says it like this, the word believe, because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory every time. Because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory every time. When you pray, prayer fights the battles. See, you've been working yourself up trying to make this happen, trying to make that happen. You know, and, and I, I, over the years, I've been part of this, what I'm about to tell you. I got worked up and tried to impress man, tried to impress the churches I went to, and tried to be something I really wouldn't, got worked up. And really what happened, I got burned out. You know why I got burned out? Because I stopped praying. I stopped believing that what I prayed for would come to pass. And I ripped, I reaped from it. What I sowed, I began to reap from that harvest. And what it was I sowed when I stopped praying, guess what? Every seed that I planted dried up and died. But when you plant seed, when you obey God, and you have a prayer life, your life is prayer, you're going to see things change. You're going to see things change for other people around you. Don't doubt. Believe. Because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory every time. Whoo, hallelujah. Notice in Luke 6 and 12, and it came to pass in those days that he went into a mountain to pray, talking about Jesus, and continue to pray, catch this, all night in prayer to God. And I can just, <laughs> I can hear, you know, because, you know, Bert Clendon and I, I heard him talk one time on prayer. And, and I heard him say that you can tell who the true church is, is when you call a prayer meeting, and the people who shows up, that's who the real church is. <laughs> Pastors, you think you're really successful? Call a prayer meeting for the next five weeks. And find out then, and base that upon who your real church is, and you'll really see. Listen, because not everybody believes prayer works. That's why they don't do it. You know why you and I don't pray like we need to pray? Is because we really don't believe in prayer 100%. You got to pray. Jesus even practices. And if we're supposed to be imitators of Jesus, we're supposed to do the same things Jesus did, then he prayed all night. There should be times in our life that we pray all night. You may say, well, I don't have nothing to pray for all night. Then, But we go six months and talk about the same thing over and over and over, how bad we're having it. Don't look like it's ever going to change. Don't look like we're ever going to come out of this. Everything happens. It always happens. See? But we'll short talk for six months straight, day and night, how bad we're having it. But why don't we go for six months and pray all night and all day? And pray and seek God. And you know what would happen? You got it. It would change. I want to challenge you right now. Ask the church. Ask the kingdom. Ask the body of Christ. From the, my desk to you. By access of internet. In the next few weeks. Let's really pray. That a major move of God. Would be birthed out of the believer, out of the kingdom, and manifested here on earth, we're already seeing God begin to shake things in churches. Miracles are happening. But it's just the beginning of what God can do and will do. Well, I see you in part four.